Hey guys, today we're going to be checking out Fable, which is a brand new motion design platform. You might have heard a lot of buzz about Fable online because they just received a huge amount of funding, a $15 million investment that everybody's talking about. The makers of Fable say that it's intuitive and easy to use. It's also web based, so they say it's great for team collaboration. Some people have compared Fable to Canva saying it's the next Canva except for motion design. We're gonna be diving into it today. There is a free version available if you wanna check it out. And I would say that Fable's probably a little bit in its infancy, so I might be making more videos about this in the future. But today I'm gonna to take a look at what's available with Fable now and give my final thoughts on it as it stands today. This video is not sponsored as always. These are my original honest opinions. Let's get right into it. Here's what Fable looks like when you sign in. These are some demos that you can open up and kind of click around and see how they were built. Or you can start a new project on your own, which I'm going to do here at the top right of the screen. And here's our first look at the Fable interface. My initial impression looking at this is that it looks very professional. I mean, it really looks just like kind of like After Effects or Apple Motion. There's a timeline down here at the bottom. Over here is where you can kind of pull in like a library of assets and effects. This little sparkle button here has all your effects in it. And over here on the right side of the screen is kind of your inspector where you can make a lot of changes to the elements that you drop in. We're just gonna play around a little bit to show you some of the capabilities here. The first thing here is our background color defaults to white but I can change that to a solid color, any color I want. I can go by hex code. They also have pre-selected color palettes for you to work from, which is kind of cool. And if you drop down here, you can actually even do a gradient. Why don't we just play with the gradient a little bit and we can make the gradient any color we want. Let's start with something like that. All right, now let's just play with some shapes here. I'm gonna head over to the top left of the screen and pick the ellipse tool. And I'm gonna draw a circle and I can make it perfectly round by holding down my shift key as I draw. And now if I head on over to the right side of the screen with the inspector, I can change the fill to just be an outline by selecting stroke and turning off fill. And I can make this wider here, this level. And just like with our background, we can change the color and I can even change it to a gradient. And then the next part I'm gonna do is really where like the motion design comes in, where it makes this a different platform from like, let's say Canva. We're gonna be using keyframes here in Fable to make our motion. Now, if you're not familiar with keyframes, it's definitely like a professional kind of tool. On my other channel, which is totally focused on Final Cut and Apple Motion, I do have a tutorial and an explanation about what keyframes are. I'm gonna link to that right here and in the description in case you're curious and you're trying to understand the concept of keyframes because those concepts apply in many different platforms just like they do here in Fable. So that might help you out a little bit. So basically what we're doing with keyframes is we're telling our motion design platform, in this case Fable, when we want action to start in our project and when we want it to end. I'm gonna make this circle start from nothing and then to scale up large. I'm gonna set keyframes over here on the ellipse width and height. And to set those keyframes, I just click this little stopwatch icon. Now I could select the stopwatch icon for both the width and height, but if I wanna link these two together because I want this shape to stay a perfect circle. What I need to do is kind of hover over here on the width, find this little dot and draw this little squiggle over to my height. And now these two elements are linked. And what I'm going to do is enter in a value of zero to make this very small. And then I'm gonna drag my playhead down my timeline, let's say two seconds. And I'm going to add another keyframe again by hitting this little stopwatch and then I'm going to increase the size like so. And then I can play this back by hitting this play button here on the very left of the screen. Let me cue up my playhead here and hit play. It looks a little jerky because it is a web-based platform and we'll talk about that. But there you go, that gives you the general idea and this is how you can build motion graphics here in Fable. All right, so now that we've keyframed the scale of this circle, let's add an effect to it. I'm gonna head on up to the top right of the screen to the effects icon, and let's look for the one that says 
trim path. I'm gonna drag this over into our inspector to apply it. I'm gonna cute my playhead to the beginning of my circle here. And let's make a keyframe for trim start and trim end and just play with these values. And then let's head on over to the two second mark in our timeline and make more keyframes on those values. And let me play back what we have. And now let me move my playhead here. Let's change the cap to round so the edges of this circle look a little softer. Now that we have our one circle, let me show you a couple other features here in Fable. We can replicate this circle so we have more of them by hitting this button here. It's called the duplicator. Now I've got multiple versions and what I can do is spread them out using the horizontal and vertical padding values. We can add more columns. So that is how you can create kind of an interesting background. And let's also look at the text feature here. I can just hit T for text over here on the left side of the screen and then just click in my canvas. And just like any other platform, Photoshop or anything, I can revise the text just by clicking on it and typing away. And if we drop down here on the fonts, you can see there's a lot of different fonts for us to choose from. I can change the color of my font and I can even make it a gradient. And I can apply filters to the fonts as well. Like here, if I just wanted to add a drop shadow, I would drag it into my inspector window and then I can make a lot of adjustments there. It is looking pretty grainy with that drop shadow. I wonder why. So that's a very basic look at Fable. Now I'd like to share with you some thoughts that I have about it. As you can see, looking at this interface, this is a very complex program. You're doing keyframing, you're linking things together. You have tons of control in terms of like scaling things and adding motions. And it really feels pretty professional to me. The drawback of that, I would say, is that there's a very steep learning curve on this software. Even as a professional, I'm an expert in Apple Motion. I have an entire channel dedicated to Apple Motion, um, which I'll link to below if you wanna check it out. But as a professional, I can see that there's a steep learning curve for this. I review a lot of products on this channel where a lot of them are more like in the prosumer category, like Create Studio or Canva or Doodly or NVIDIA, where I can jump into a brand new program play around for about an hour or two and then feel really comfortable giving you guys a tutorial and giving you my honest opinions about it. I really haven't been able to really crack the code on Fable yet. I think it's, you know, really pretty robust and it feels really professional and there's a lot to learn in here. Now, the thing about it is that while Fable does have a YouTube channel with tutorials, you really don't get a ton of help so far with Fable if you're trying to create something on your own because those tutorials, while yeah, I can follow along and create the same animation that the tutor is giving me in those tutorials, I don't feel empowered after watching them to create something on my own because there's really no explanation about why a behavior or effect works the way that it does. So here's my honest opinion about Fable. I think they have an uphill battle on their hands because if you wanted to take the time to start from zero and learn a motion design platform like this, you could easily reach for After Effects and Apple Motion and you would have the same learning curve, but you would have many, 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 many more resources from where you could learn how to use it because there's so many YouTube channels dedicated to just After Effects or Apple Motion tutorials, whereas Fable, you're kind of on your own with this one. One of the other things that Fable really touts is that it's web-based. So theoretically, you could hop onto any computer anywhere, log into your Fable account and get to work, which sounds great. For me personally, that's not really a problem I need a solution for because if I wanted to, let's say, work on an Apple Motion project here in my office, and then I wanted to finish it up from home on my laptop or my desktop at home, I could just drop that project into Dropbox and access it 
anywhere. So for me, that's not really a big selling feature. The other problem with it being web-based is that it's only as fast as your internet connection. And one other thing about it being web-based, and this is kind of a minor thing, but I do wanna show you because for me, it's like a speed convenience thing. I'm gonna throw in an insert right here. This is what happens when you right click in Apple Motion, you get like a menu of features. It's just like a real quick shortcut if you wanna, let's say, change the cursor you're working with or other access other features. Whereas here in Fable, if I right click, because it's a website, I just get these like typical Chrome browser messages. So my honest opinion about Fable is that it's too complicated for the prosumer market. And it's a product that I don't think really fills the gap that does exist in this field, something between After Effects and Apple Motion, and then something really simple that you could find online like videos. I really do think that there's a middle ground here that Fable could find if they tried, but I think they need to make this more user-friendly, dumb it down a little bit um, and add more resources for it. So I'm not really sold on Fable yet, but I know it's just the beginning. So I don't want to dog anybody's new platform that they're still building out. You guys, what did you think of Fable looking at the interface? Did you think it seemed as complicated as I did? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching today. I will see you again.